Are you ready to take your real estate investing business to the next level? Well, you're in the right place. This is the Real Estate Investing Morning Show. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. With your mentors, Wayne and Gabby. Good morning and welcome to the Real Estate Investing Morning Show. Today is Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024, and the weather today will be a high of minus 7 degrees in Edmonton, 4 degrees in Calgary, 8 degrees in Vancouver, minus 2 degrees in Saskatoon, and 1 degree in Toronto. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, I'm just taking a drink of water. <laughs> so, just let me clear my throat. Uh, it, it is good to be here. It is good to be on the live show. Yes, we broadcast live every morning. Every <laughs> I know. Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Mountain Time on the Podbean app. If you'd like to be a part of this live show, it is open to the public. All you need to do is just uh, download that app, Podbean, search up the Real Estate Investing Morning Show, and then you will get a notification that we are live in the morning. And you can come in, you can say good morning to all the other real estate investors that are here. And the best part is that you can ask any questions you want in the comments, and we will answer it for free. Mm -hmm. It's free coaching every morning. It's it's the only free coaching platform, only live podcast for real estate investors in Canada. I'm going to, this might be a stretch, but I want to say in the world. Worldwide. I want to say first time in history <laughs> and last because <laughs> who else would do this? <laughs> Probably no one. Who else would give away all this free education and free coaching and get up early in the morning uh, for nothing? it's fucking psychotic <laughs> <laughs> um I, I enjoy it i don't enjoy it this morning i'll be honest with you i'll be honest with you sleep was a little rough last night that's the problem is that it, you, you can't stay out late during weeknights i started playing ball hockey again and there's a game tonight at 8 30 and i'm like okay so it's a 45 minute drive there um and then you finish the game at 9 30 but it doesn't never really end at 9 30 like you you probably get out of there like close to 10 then a 45 minute drive home and then you're awake afterwards mm -hmm. like you don't go to sleep afterwards so i probably won't be getting into bed like realistically till about like midnight and then i gotta be up in five and a half hours it kind of yeah so doing the podcast is is it's kind of limits what i can do in the evening and then if you have a bad sleep, it's just like, okay, well, tomorrow's going to suck. Mm -hmm. right? But uh, anyway, it's enough about my complaining. I've been doing enough complaining lately. <laughs> Paul just showed up again today with a question. Before we Love get into it. that, I'd just like to say um, a big thank you to everyone who reached out yesterday and sent me messages. Um, did you get any? No. Okay. So just me. <laughs> uh, Thank you to everyone for for reaching out about yesterday's podcast. Um, that was uh, that was a difficult one. I I wanted to do it, but it was still difficult because um, I, you, when you put your neck out like that, it 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 it, it does. Um, it's risky. Yeah, um, for sure. But it was something that I was really passionate about, and I wanted to make sure that everybody knew and had a better understanding, and then just 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 to help everyone protect themselves. Um, so I, I appreciate the the kind messages um, that that I got yesterday, and and I'm just I'm just curious, and this might this might might set the the course of the show off a little bit because Paul's got a question, but thank you for the question, Paul. Um, I'm curious what you guys would do in my situation. Are we going to wait for people to? No, I'm, we can we can check the comments maybe after the break this morning. Um, but I'm curious what you would do in my situation because it, it is it is definitely hard. It's it's hard to to know what we know and to see what we see and not do anything. Mm -hmm. um, Edward uh, Colton says Edward's not in that shit. <laughs> Did any of you guys? So I so I posted um, I posted a, a video in the REI Masters Facebook group yesterday about the um, about that that feller. <laughs> This is another one of those 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 guys that um, that uh, I've laughed about over the years. Um, that private investment club. 
And uh, anyways, uh, I posted the video of, of that, that, that feller with Private Investment Club that was holding that uh, online conference. I think it must have been like 2020, 2021. Um, and he spent so much money on like that, that big screen and everything. So you could see all the, the people on zoom behind him, and, and he goes and he's like, God, oh, if this is going to be successful, I better go, I better go on this website and go find a speaker and pay for them to be on my show. So what's he do? He goes, he goes to the agency and, and he finds, <laughs> he finds a speaker for his conference and he chooses Edward Snowden. <laughs> It's, you guys got to go watch this video. It is by far one of my favorite videos on the internet. Uh, so, so this gentleman with Private Investment Club was 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 shut down by the Securities Commission like twice, twice, and he still operates and he still coaches people and he finds some workaround for people to invest in his Private Investment Club for real estate and. Um, <laughs> And he, he, he calls an agency to find a, a keynote speaker for his conference online. And he chooses Edward Snowden, a fucking whistleblower. <laughs> and Edward Snowden, like, have to, I don't want to ruin the video, but like basically calls him out live on his conference and pulls up the news article that shows, you know, his one point, I, think, I can't remember what it was, $1.45 million Ponzi scheme. And it says, is this you <laughs> in front of everybody? I mean, there had to be hundreds, thousands of people on that on that uh, live stream. And uh, it, it was, yeah, it's pretty funny. Anyways, go to the REM Masters, uh, Real Estate Investing Masters Facebook group. And I, and I, and I posted that YouTube uh, video. And it, it's just, the guy that put that video on is, uh, it's like a streamer, not a streamer, but like a YouTuber. And, um, and he goes into great detail with it, which is really good. And it just reiterates everything that I talked about yesterday. And just that anybody can go to some agency website and hire someone to go and speak on the stage for them. And then you get to stand next to them and you, and you get that credibility. Right. And he was talking about how he was sitting next to Grant Cardone and, and Grant, you know, had no idea what this guy was about, but he's just like, He's just like lifting him up. He's like, oh yeah, invest with this guy. This is the guy. You got to do it. You got to, if you want to play with the big dogs, you got to be, you know, got to put the big money in and just goes to show that Grant had zero idea who this person was, but he was willing to say anything for this guy because he paid him. Right. And that's what that, that's what this industry is or the fake guru industry. And I don't want you guys to fall into that trap. But if you knew stuff like this, what would you do? That's my question for today. Put it in the comments. If, 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 you, if you had information like this, would you warn everyone or would you be quiet? Mm -hmm. Now, don't just say I would warn everybody, you know, because you got to keep in mind that your reputation is on the line and your reputation is very important in this industry. Do you want to be known as the person that fucking bitches and complains about everybody? It's not a good look. It's not a good look. Yeah. Do, you, do, you want, do you want people coming after you, maybe digging into your past, calling you out. So once you open the can of worms, like you, like once you open the, the bottle, you can't put, you can't close it. Mm -hmm. um, Trung says, I would focus more on the problem and the consequences and less on the people. Make sure everybody knows about the problem and stay away and how to stay away from the problem. That's fair. Yeah. I've been talking about the problem for a very long time and yet it still continues to happen. And mm -hmm. then I, I, I say things like yesterday and they're like, I had no idea this has ever gone on. I had no idea. And, and it's, it, it, I think proximity and, and, and being in the community long enough, you'll, you'll, you'll catch things. But for most investors, most of the investors, in our community are, are, have, are, have only been investing for less than a year or two. Mm -hmm. um, I said this many times that, the, the, it's, I wouldn't call this like a revolving door, but lots of people come in thinking that they want to invest in real estate and they hang around for a year or two and then they learn what it's all about really. And then they leave. And there's lots of new investors coming and going, coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. And a lot of those new investors are the ones to get fucked over and then they leave. So the story never really sticks around. You know yeah, what I mean? For sure. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Chung also says, I'm curious how Gabrielle feels sitting next to someone getting into high risk situations and putting his neck out. <laughs> Wayne just you should have seen his face. You feel like you had something to say, but you bit your. I can bite my tongue. 
I'm capable of biting my tongue. <laughs> You'd be surprised how much I bite my tongue. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll answer the question. Um, I mean, like, this is a different, this is kind of a different situation. And it's um, something that has, you know, really bothered both Wayne and I. Um, I probably would never go on and say stuff. I'm, well, actually, that's hard to say, because when I get fired up, sometimes I almost post a lot of a lot of shit. Oh, yeah, you <laughs> you are worse than I am. I got to keep this one. I got to keep this one held down. Um, yeah, I'm. But I mean, those are moments of weakness. I usually don't end up doing anything about it. You write the message and then you and then I it. delete it. Yeah, I do that a lot, actually. You do that. Um, that it's kind of. I said I do that a lot. Well, you said I do. That. It's kind of a form of therapy. I find. Um, yeah, I, I often do that. I should actually go through my notes and start erasing shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you have a bad day and you decide yeah. to post one of them. Um, but in this situation, um, there was a bit of anxiety around it yesterday. And because I know that, you know, if the hammer does come down, that that's not just, that's not just Wayne's, you know, um, that has to, you know, make his way through that shit storm. I'm right beside him. So yeah, yeah it doesn't, it doesn't, it feels a little bit scary, but it also feels like the right thing to do. Yeah. And I think that that's, you know, it could be said about a lot of things in life. So you just need to decide what, what side you want to be on. And I know that we're on the right side of it. So, yeah. 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 I, I, and, and, and moments like that, I don't really think about the fact that like what you said, that when I do things, it does affect you. To be honest, it actually affects our family. Mm -hmm. And because of the fact that we are so open and transparent and everybody just knows everything about our life that when you expose yourself to risks like that um you know like my kids all over my my profile my kids all over my podcast you know everybody knows her name it's it's it, you don't know how someone's gonna react when you know in a moment like that so i do have to consider that i have to think about that i have to think about also i mean at the end of the day like how it's going to affect my 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 mood and my energy and if I got to be dealing with stuff, like, am I, I, I work from home, like on our home office. So, you know, I'm, I'm that, that energy and that negativity is, is, is here in our, in our home mm -hmm. and that get pa that gets passed on our kid. Right. So I, lots to consider. Yeah, absolutely. But I can't imagine not saying something. Like if, if, if I, if I didn't, then more people would be affected by this. Mm -hmm. I, I guarantee fucking tea, the one that I was talking about yesterday, the two that, I, well, there's two big ones I was talking about yesterday. The one in Saskatoon, that one's just fucking terrible. And I don't think there's much of it can be done about it. It just, it's, it's a never ending fucking terrible story. It's a nightmare. Um, but this other one will, will 100% we'll be talking about this in two years. I, I I can I can guesstimate I can estimate the the lifespan of a of a fucking scheme. That one will go for two years because it's got a lot of momentum, and I think there'll be a lot of hip hip hooray behind it. And I think a lot of people will jump on the train, but it's inevitable to fail. I've seen stuff like this before. It will inevitably fail, and by then I'd worry that it'd be just be it'd be too big. It'll make the fucking news. This fucking fake guru, this fake guru industry really bothers me, really bothers me. But and I, I didn't want to talk about that today. I just wanted to thank everyone for reaching out and and understanding. Yeah. Um, and Paul says I'd name the stuff. I'd name names on stuff that's already public or in the news, which is that's what, what you've I done. try and yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, I don't name. I don't name names of stuff that's going on right now. But by golly, I'll give you all the fucking details. <laughs> you can put it together yourself. Yeah. And the hard part is that some of the smaller scale stuff, like, you know, that we were talking about yesterday, it's like some local to Edmonton. Yeah. Local to Edmonton, people getting fucked over for, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, like, promissory you know, smaller notes. promissory notes that don't make the news or that get settled. That stuff doesn't ever really go public. So, like, we're just sitting on, you know, these names <laughs> yeah that like at every moment of every day i just want to like scream out and like 
Because you're worried that they're lurking in the shadows? Well, we just learned that they are. They're still messaging people for private well, loans. Yeah, we learned and, yesterday. Yeah, yeah just literally like on that the show. Just, oh, that fired me up yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. Ba-dum, ba-dum. It's a bad spot to be in. Ba-dum, ba-dum. <laughs> Fucking. Okay. But anyways, um, Paul has got a question. Uh, what's that question looking like? Paul wants to know, hold on, I'm just scrolling back up. <clears throat> Upon the purchase of a property with a month to month renter, what's the law around eviction of those tenants for renovations? Um, as far as time given, et cetera. Great question. Mm-hmm. Great question. Gabby's going to Google it and turn the break. <laughs> I'm, I have, I know more or less. Okay, good. We will, um, <laughs> I need to fact check. Well, we'll, we'll answer that one for Albertans, but, um, the answer to, to these questions can always be found in your provincial residential tenancy act. Um, but we will answer that question for Albertans because that's where Paul is. And after that, I don't know if you guys can see the title of the podcast, um, we got some big news uh, last month and then some more news uh, this just this week about some forecasts for interest rates, the Bank of Canada's um, um, rates. So we're going to be getting into that this morning as well and what that means for us and what that might uh, do for the market uh, this spring. So stick around and we'll be right back after this break. Are you just starting to build your real estate portfolio? At Kirkwood & Brennan, we are real estate investors and mortgage brokers who understand real estate investing. Not only do we help you get a mortgage, but we help you build a better real estate portfolio. Check us out at kbmortgages.ca or call 778-847-0552. Take the time now so you have more time later. And we are back. And guys, if, you, if you're planning on buying or selling uh, a property or an investment property in the Edmonton area, definitely give our friends over at Calvin Realty a call. Uh, they're the best, uh, but don't take my word for it. Uh, let's let's read some Google reviews. Let's see what some of their clients are saying. And they've been getting some decent reviews lately. Absolutely, yeah. It's um, I, I think it has to do with uh, the market and things are moving quick. And we literally have a brand new review from 17 hours ago. Nice. Um, so I'm going to read it for you. Uh, my name is, uh, um, well, you don't need to know their name. <laughs> but and, uh, I'm an out-of-province investor. Calvin Hexter is an amazing helper who can put himself in the shoes of his clients, does beyond anyone can do for someone. If you are looking for an agent to help you find the property you are looking for, I truly recommend 100% Calvin for your satisfaction guaranteed. Amazing. Yeah. I agree. (laughs) Did you find it? Um, Yeah. So, well, no, I just wanted to fact check myself before I start spitting stuff off. And I just haven't quite got there yet. It's kind of like engineers. Like whenever you ask, for those of you guys dealt with engineers, or maybe you're an engineer and you can relate. But um, you ever ask an engineer a question, a good one will say, hang on a second, I'll get back to you. (laughs) They'll never, they know the answer. But yeah. they won't answer it because they want to be 100% positive before they answer it. Uh, so they don't look like an idiot. <laughs> yes. So I'm not worried about looking like an idiot. I just don't want you to take the um, my advice if I say like a little piece of it wrong or, you know, get the... Of course. Whatever. Um, and unfortunately, I'm just, it doesn't look like I'm going to find it while we're talking here. So I bet you I, I should. Sh- yeah, that would be... Great. I knew that you had to pull up the um, the it's um, reviews. the renovations ones. See, the renovations is, is a lot more common um, when it comes to uh, Ontario. It's a big discussion in Ontario because the, the whole cash for keys or like the hey, we're going to renovate this property thing. It's 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 common there because it's, it's the only way to get a tenant out, um, and it's it's a big discussion because it's kind of unethical. So like, it gets brought up a lot. Um, but I'm just skimming through uh, the periodic tenancies here. So if you want to know about Alberta, you have to look at um, periodic tenancies from month to month. And I'm having some difficulty finding it myself. Okay. Um, notice to terminate for condominium conversion. There is notice to terminate tenancy of employment. Uh, Imply notice of rent increase. Notice to terminate not required. No. 
Um, so I know that like when you're terminating a monthly or yeah, a periodic tenancy in general and uh, well, yeah, let's say monthly because I think it is different what, if it's um, weekly versus, so if they're month to month, um, you do need to give a three month notice if it is if it falls under one of the reasons that you are allowed to remove the tenants okay so you can't just if they're month to month you can't just be like okay at any given time i can just give them three months notice and they have to leave no it has to fall under one of the very specific reasons why you can end a month to month periodic yeah. tenancy okay um so yeah there's termination for condominium conversions uh, termination for substantial breach. Um, Why am I having so much trouble finding this this morning? You, yeah, know, that, you know what it is? It's the fact that like we're we're on a live show and it's like we're frantically doing it, but I can normally find this in less than two minutes. Totally. Um, so there's also, and I'm just like, I'm trying to go just again through what I have in my mind of what I've known in the past to be true. Um, so like if the person is purchasing the property and themselves or a family member is moving in. Yeah. And then there's the major renovation. And so what I really wanted to confirm is what they define as a major renovation. So does that mean that it's going to be uninhabitable? Because a lot of renovations you can do while somebody is living there, right? Yeah. You can renovate a bathroom, you can renovate a kitchen, you can renovate a bedroom, um, all while somebody is still living in the house, it's possible. Or if it's going to be like a week long renovation, you can put them in a hotel. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I wanted to confirm what the definition of, of renovation was to be able to end a tenancy. Yeah. And that's what I wanted. That's the information that I wanted to be able to figure out. And and so I found some information here. Um, I'm, I'm more so looking for the, the length of notice for something like this. It's important to know. Um, it's, Un unless I'm wrong, it's which I don't think I am. It's three months. Uh, Landlord has to give the tenant three there's, months. There's two conflicting okay. things here. So there's a website called landlordandtenant.org, which is, they say, the landlord and tenant laws. This one here says for condominium, a condominium conversion or major renovations, um, you need to be provide them in writing, give the address of the property, landlord signature, state of the reason, so condo conversion or major renovations, and state the date the tenancy ends. And it needs to be served on the tenant at least 365 days before the termination date. That's what landlordandtenant.org says. If you go to notice to terminate for condominium conversion in the RTA, it said the landlord may terminate the tenancy by serving a notice of termination on the tenant at least 180 days before the day named on the notice. So we have two conflicting oh, answers here. Okay. Um, now this is for a condominium, uh, but major renovations actually is not coming up in the RTA. Uh, which is why it maybe falls under that other... Yeah, I actually, it's funny because I just stumbled upon it too. And um, the, so I'll verify what, what I'm on. I think it's called the RTA Handbook, um, which is put out by the government of Alberta. And I'm just going to read it here. It says, if the landlord needs to do major renovations that require the premises to be empty, the landlord must give the tenant 365 days notice to terminate the periodic tenancy. Note, Major renovations do not include painting, replacing of flooring coverings, or routine maintenance. Yeah. No rental increases are allowed during that year. If the landlord gives less than 365 days notice to terminate a tenancy for major renovation, so that major renovations can be done or increase the rent after giving the notice, the landlord has committed an offense under the RTA. Yeah. Okay, and then it... Um, and then it goes over the other reasons. So if the tenant has not committed a substantial breach, a landlord can only end a periodic tenancy for the following reasons. The landlord or a relative of the landlord intends to live in the residential premises. The landlord has sold the residential premises and the purchaser, purchaser or a relative of the purchaser wants to move in. The landlord has sold a detached or semi-detached dwelling unit or condominium unit and the purchaser has uh, requested in writing that the tenancy be terminated. 
The landlord intends to demolish the building. The landlord intends to use the residential premise for a non-residential use, such as business purposes. Or the landlord is an educational institution and the tenant is no longer a student or will no longer be a student at the termination date specified in the notice of termination. So Paul, if you'd like, um, there's franchise opportunities for REI Master's <laughs> Mentorship Program. Um, if you'd like to buy in uh, and turn your rental property into um, REI Master's University in that basement suite, <laughs> <laughs> hit me up. I. <laughs> uh, Yes. So, so yeah, 365 uh, days. If you, if you could um, just, I didn't hear the beginning of that portion. Was that only specifically for when someone, when someone, is that for if you already own it or is that if you are buying it? Just if a landlord intends to do major renovations. Okay. And so the other part of the question was, is Paul was asking if you are buying the property and there's month to month investors or sorry, month to month tenants and you are wanting to do these things, can major renovations be one of those reasons? And, and I just want you guys to know in section 47 of the RTA for Alberta, uh, obligations and rights of new landlord, uh, a person who acquires the interest of a landlord in a residential premises has the rights and is subject to the obligations of the previous landlord with respect to a security deposit paid to the previous landlord in respect to the residential premises. Um, so if you, if you are taking over, um, if you're buying a property and you are not planning on moving into it or any of those things or a family member moving into it, um, you have to um, fulfill the obligations of that contract. Mm -hmm. And with month to month, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty much till death do you part. <laughs> um, it's month to month is so bad. It's so bad. Never, ever, ever let it lapse. So we have, with calendars in our phones with reminders specifically for that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> never, ever let it go month to month. It's just, it's, it's, it's a, such, it's so terrible and it's so bad for landlords. Um, yeah. But it sounds like major renovations is okay as long as there's 365 days. Um, but I'm again, I'm, did you find that in the RTA? Um, in the RTA handbook. In the RTA handbook. See, Which this is, is the through other. the government of Alberta. Yeah, but I, Okay, so this is this is why it's so weird. So you have the, the landlord and tenant .org, you have the RTA handbook, and then you have the RTA. And I it's been noted on many occasions that the RTA handbook conflicts with the actual RTA mm -hmm. con, uh, um, act, the Real yeah. Resident, Residential Tenancies Act. It conflicts with it. And they say always go by the act. And if you're ever to be in a court or if you're ever to be in a hearing at the RTDRS, they will always go by the act. And um, so in what? that situation, I mean, I guess it would really depend on your tenants. And it, I would say more often than not, the tenant is, is, is probably going to oblige when you give that much notice. But if the tenant was to dispute it and you had to go to court, you better have reference material for your rights and yeah. show that you followed it. Yeah. Um, so Paul had also asked about a rent increase um, in these situations with uh, month to month. Yeah. So for uh, rent cannot be increased under a period of tenancy unless the tenant has been properly served before the increase is to take effect with a written notice that contains all of the required information. Um, so they have to be given proper given the proper period of notice to increase rent, depending on the type of periodic tenancy. So for month to month tenancy, three full tenancy months before the date on which the increase is to take effect. And um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm just checking. I think it still falls under the, it, that it can't be increased um, within like more than once within a 365 day period. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't say specifically in here, but I'm fairly certain that that's the case. As long as it hasn't been increased in the last 365 yeah. days, then you give the three months and you can do an increase. Exactly, exactly. And um, yeah. So have a look at that lease before you purchase the property just to make sure and see when the last uh, increase was. Mm -hmm. You should be okay. Um, that's, another, that's another way to get somebody out. It's so greasy, but I'll just say it, you know, if you have the opportunity to increase the rent, you can increase the rent to whatever you want. Super greasy, but that is one way to get a tenant out. I, I'm wearing my investor landlord hat right now. I'm not wearing my my 
my my human being hat. <laughs> um, but that is that is definitely another option as well. It, it, like, I think that everyone, every tenants can, I think you could be reasonable. I think if you have a reasonable tenant, they would understand, you know, this is your property and this is your investment and you should be able to do what you want with it. There is another side to the story that, you know, this is someone's home and, you know, someone may have been living there for a very long time and you're disrupting their life and you're just, you know, uh, as as things we're we're in a pretty you know stable market right now, but if we're in a we if the market changes and it's hard to find rentals and rents go up, and you know, it it, it could dramatically affect someone's uh, home and their life and their ability to keep their kid in in their school nearby. It's so we do have to think about that as well. Um, so take all that into consideration for your decisions. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we got some news. We got some things in the news today. Um, this is a, a, a sorry. Oh, Chris is leaving now. Bye, Chris. Crispy Chicken is on his way out. Has left the building. Um, he's going to miss the big news. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, okay. So this is a little bit of an older article, but um, I came in actually at the end of the, the last year. End uh, of December? End of December. Uh, but, you know, there's been lots of talks about it since um, trying to it's almost like so TD released a, a report um, with their forecasts of, of the market and everything. And um, hidden in one of the lines was what they what their forecast is for the Bank of Canada uh, uh, policy rate. Um, and since released it's there's been lots of speculation on what that means and and and, and whether it's accurate or not um i haven't heard of any other um uh, banks releasing anything like this so this is this is a big one but the headline uh, is bank of canada to drop interest rate this is an article that, that summarizes the, the 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 report uh bank of canada to drop interest rate to 2.25 percent by 2025 says canada trust uh, this would cut the interest rate, which currently sits at 5% by more than half, a move that would be extremely welcomed by borrowers saddled with, in many cases, prohibitively high mortgage payments. So the Bank of Canada uh, will drop its policy interest rate to a much more, I hate when they say things like that, it's projected. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the, oh, I see what they're saying. The Bank of Canada will drop its policy rate to a much more attractive 2.25% by 2025, according to a recent forecast from TD. The long-term forecast written by TD CFA, James Orlando, and Director Thomas Feltmate predicts that inflationary pressures will ease over the medium term, allowing the central bank to cut its policy rate back to the neutral rate of 2.25%. This would cut the interest rate, which currently sits at 5% by more than half a move that would be extremely welcomed by borrowers saddled with, in many cases, prohibitively high mortgage payments. In recent months, borrowers have increasingly struggled with affordability. Would-be home buyers have moved to the sidelines, either unable to qualify for a mortgage or voluntarily holding off until interest rates come down. As a result, home sale numbers have dropped in major markets all across the country. Um, we have a lot of mentees in Ontario that are saying, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the the market has been very, very stale there and not a whole lot coming on the market. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our mentees um, was saying that this, it's anything that does come on the market gets snagged up really quickly because there's a big supply issue because nobody wants to list. Um, those already holding a mortgage, however, are greatly feeling the pain. A recent survey from Zolo found that nearly half of Canadian mortgage holders are worried about their mortgages renewing at much higher rates. Mm -hmm. Another TD report released earlier this month found that by the end of 2023, which was last year, uh, last month, nearly 50% of all mortgage holders will see their monthly payments increase in comparison to February 2022, the month before the Bank of Canada embarked on its rate hike campaign. By the end of 2024, that share rises to 65%. Wow. The average mortgage holder is expected to see their monthly payments increase by nearly 30% by the end of 2024. Mm -hmm. That's not good. The Canada Mortgage and Housing Commission, or CMHC, 
is similarly bracing for borrowers facing difficult payment increases, with new research finding that homeowners renewing their mortgages over the next two years could see a 30% to 40% increase in their average monthly payments. On a $500,000 mortgage with a five-year fixed term rate and a 25-year amortization period, for example, a rate increase from 1.94%, which is pretty much what homeowners were getting Mm -hmm. five years ago. On a $500,000 mortgage, a rate increase from 1.94% to 5.45% would result in a $950 jump in their monthly mortgage payments. Ouch. And they're saying- Who has a spare grand laying around like in an average household? Not many people. (laughs) Not many. Not many. That is almost $12,000 a year. That's like, well, if you know, if most family households are making between 100 to 150, I know you're going to, you're going to groan about that, but you know, $120,000 for a household, that is, that is 10% of your yearly income before taxes. Actually, let's just play a little math game. What would that be after taxes? I'm just going to use 40% just as a very basic number. If your house is making $120,000 and then after taxes, you're bringing in, um, you're, you're, you're netting 72, 12,000 makes up 16.6% of your yearly income. Wow. That's huge. That is monstrous. <laughs> that is ridiculous. And now you can see the issue because what they're saying is by the end of 2024, they're saying 65% of mortgage holders in Canada are going to be hit with this. Yeah, it's massive. I, I, is there a word bigger than massive? Catastrophic. <laughs> it's, it's very concerning. Um, a bright spot for those having to renew is that some mortgage terms have already fallen below the 5% interest rate mark, which is, which is good. We've seen some drops. Around mid-December, some institutions like Equitable Bank, Think Financial, and MCAP began offering five-year insured fixed rate mortgages at slightly more appealing rates. We've been seeing a lot of that. Keaton's been talking about that. This shift towards lower rates is due to the bond yield market, which fixed rates are based on, cooling over the past month. And that's something that you need to understand is that um, fixed rates are based on the bond yield market and not by the policy rate. To, uh, you know what? I, I shouldn't even open my mouth. This is stuff that I can never memorize. And then when, yeah. whenever the, a question like this comes up, I say, let's just wait till Keaton comes back on. <laughs> um, he's the investor focused mortgage broker that that's going to be, be able to answer this. Um, but this, what we're talking about is um, The renew, no, I'm not nodding it out of my mouth. No, this is like, <laughs> I'm going to start talking on my butt and then someone's going to correct me. I'm, I'm probably close to 99% close to right. Um, but someone's going to correct me in the comments and I just don't need that. I don't, I don't talk unless I know. I don't talk unless I know. And this is one of those things that I just rely on my power team for. So I'm just going to read this article. Uh, but as higher rates uh, continue to weigh on borrowers, TD found that mortgage holders have pulled back their spending by approximately 1% compared to those without a mortgage, resulting in a $6 billion reduction in spending across the economy. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. You think that, you know, some like, people are like, oh, well, like, what's it really going to do? <laughs> it does have a dramatic effect. Yeah. Just 1%. Yeah. Just pulling back your spending by 1% is a $6 billion reduction in spending across the country. That's pretty... Pretty impressive. In the absence of higher mortgage rates, TD said growth in real consumer spending would have come in at approximately 1.9% year over year in Q3. Instead, it came in at 1.5%. In their forecast, TD predicts that inflation will end the year at an annual rate of 3.8% before falling to 2.7% in 2024, 2.1% in 2025, and 2% in 2026. The Bank of Canada's target for inflation, which, sorry, that's what their target is for inflation. After hitting a 40-year high of 6.8% in 2022, inflation has come down quite a bit this year, signaling good news for Canadian spenders. Hey, big spenders. 
<laughs> Get ready for those lenders. Um, now, uh, Keaton uh, Kirkwood actually did release um, an email uh, two weeks ago regarding this. Uh, and that pretty much summarizing what we talked about today, but in a little more detail. Because what does the Bank of Canada dropping its policy rate to 2.25% in by 2025 mean? Does that mean by January 1st, 2025? Does that mean Jan December mm -hmm. 31st, 2025? What does that actually mean? And so TD has predicted that the Bank of Canada, uh, this is coming from the, the newsletter from Keaton Kirkwood, uh, TD has predicted that the Bank of Canada will cut rates, which is your variable, uh, by 1.5% this year. And we're expected to see, the expectation is, a 0.5% decrease in quarters two, three, and four. And that's what we were talking about, I think, yesterday. Um, did I say it on the show or did we have that conversation? Uh, no, I didn't talk about this on the show. Okay, sorry. That was a conversation Gabby and I had. You guys weren't here? I okay. must not have been listening either. <laughs> It's expected that there's going to be a half half a percent decrease in quarters two, three, and four, um, which would drop us by 0.75% from 5%, which brings down to 4.25. Mm -hmm. Where's the rest? They have also projected another 1.25% in cuts for 2025. Mm, okay. So they'll just continue on this, um, this path of dropping at 0.5 every quarter. That's a, that's a pretty, that's a steep drop. Yes, but that's a to say something like that, mm -hmm. to forecast something like that. Um, they better be right, because <laughs> like stuff like that is going to dramatically affect how investors are going to make decisions over the next nine months. Yeah, what types of um, like rate policies they take, and yeah, it's gonna. Well, yeah, it's gonna affect. Is everybody gonna be jumping onto variable now? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to be locking into five-year fixed terms? If I read that and then my mortgage broker said, okay, what would you like? A, a one-year fix, three-year fix, five-year fixed? I'd be like, give me some of that variable. Adjustable. Adjustable variable. Mm -hmm. absolutely, fucking lutely Because I want my mortgage payments to change when these things drop. Mm -hmm. And Gabby and I have quite a few adjustable variable rate mortgages. And I can't fucking wait for that huge $600 difference. In about a year from now. Seriously. It, it I, I'm sure I'm, yeah, like this is, this is going to dramatically affect the way that people make their decisions over the next year. Yeah. You watch, it's going to be a lot more variable rate mortgage. And maybe, maybe you never know, right? You never know when things are said like this, whether it, whether it's a, if it's, if it's a way to manipulate the market 100%. and the consumers. Yeah. Because maybe they want more of that. Yeah. I, I can't imagine why, but. But yeah, you put articles out like this or predictions out like this and it influences the masses. I, I'll, I'll finish up just the last sentence here. It says, buckle up with the housing shortage, falling construction and growing population. I suspect we're going right back into a seller's market this spring. Which is what we've been talking, what we've been talking about. I, 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 haven't, I haven't said it, but I've been reminding you guys every day. That's some good data. That's some good data. <laughs> Write that shit down. Make note of it. Because you don't get a whole heck of a lot of indicators in this industry before something happens. And a lot of people, they just wait until something happens before they make the decision. Mm -hmm. But a good, sophisticated real estate investor who pays attention will notice things before things happen. You got you to gotta see what's, what's coming around the corner. You got to watch the curve. I don't know how much more fucking obvious this can be. Yeah. <laughs> the alarms are sounding. You know, because I've been giving out some, some small little indicators lately. Being like, okay, write this down, guys. Write this down. <laughs> this one's pretty fucking monstrous. Yeah. To say, because like, keep in mind, 2022 is when, when that campaign started. And we started seeing increases of point five. What was it like? 0.5%, percent, point seven five percent. Holy fucking shit! The the sky's falling. We're oh my god, everybody, lock in your rates. It's oh my god, it's terrible. But then, for something like this, this is for them to say expect to see point five fucking drops, point five percent drops 
every quarter. This is this is fucking. Air oh my god! Okay, it's happening. Everybody, stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, stay calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody, you calm down. This is literally what's going to be happening this fucking over the next month. I guarantee fucking tea because everyone's going to be like, "What do I do? How do I buy it?" Uh, 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 uh. We're going to be putting offers on houses. You watch. We're already seeing it. Multiple offer situations. At least, at the very least, in Alberta. We are seeing it. Calgary's been dealing with it for fucking almost over a year now, at least. It's going to get significantly worse there Mm -hmm. because you already have quite a situation there with shortages and and, and, and multiple offer situations over asking. Now you just add this onto it as well. Yeah. Edmonton's been pretty – Edmonton's just – Edmonton's the quiet little brother. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's just like it's so quiet, like in cute little Edmonton. It's like they never really speak out. Everything's just been normal. You get you get what you get with a, with Edmonton. It's very it's a very expect you know easy to easy to predict. That's just Edmonton, but it's fuck me, it's going to change. Yeah. Um, Kristen had a a comment here, and this was before you played your little sound clip, like right before you played it. Oh, really? So she said, interesting. If you log on to the morning show and fall asleep because you didn't get much sleep at night, Wayne follows you around in your dream, yelling mortgage information at you and possibly something about evicting tenants. And then you cut to like the sound clip. (laughs) Uh, uh, Paul says, um, dude. There were five offers on the place I got under contract yesterday. I wasn't even the highest offer. Wow. Yeah. Paul's in GP, I think. Grand Prairie. Yeah. I've been saying this since June. Yeah. I've been saying this since June. Do not wait until interest rates start coming down. Even Do not wait until right now. <laughs> I mean, like, tomorrow will be too late, to be honest. Um. I'll I'll admit, like, I've been saying this every day that, like, I'm keeping my finger on the pulse because I'm trying to make my decisions. I don't want to jump too quickly. This could be a false start. It could be a false start. And Annette here is saying in the comments, every flip I've looked into has already had multiple offers or unconditional. Mm -hmm. And so what you're (laughs) – see, flippers are noticing it. You want to know why flippers are noticing it? Because flippers are thinking four months out. Yeah. If you buy a flip property today and you close on it in two to four weeks – You've got about three months worth of renovations before you can get that thing on the market. Best case scenario. So people are like, oh shit, got to get them now before we start fighting. Kyler says it's even the same in Red Deer. Red Deer is noticing mm-hmm. the same thing. I was, Amanda's been saying it as well. It's it's the, the market is, you're noticing that, that things are, the good deals are getting snagged up. That's because good, smart people notice what's coming, right? And and maybe maybe they don't know for certain, but a fix and flipper who's thinking three to four months out has to take that chance. Yeah. Because if you if you wait until February, March, April, by then you're going to be fighting with everybody else. So if you can see an opportunity to grab some right now and quickly get in and out, renovate it, and then sell it when it's a fucking frenzy, yeah. you're going to make a very good profit. Mm-hmm. So fix and flippers are smart. But they're all. Uh, there's always risk that comes with that. Don't don't fucking jump and buy properties today unconditional because because Wayne said so. That's not what I said. I'm saying just take all this stuff into consideration. What I'm what I'm more so I'm talking to long term buy and hold um, investors right now. So those of you guys have been waiting on the on the sidelines because interest rates got too high, and then before that you were bitching and complaining because there's too many offers. I want you to remember back to 2022 before all these interest rate interest rate um, jumps that everybody in Alberta was bitching and complaining because of the multiple offer situations and everything was going for over ask. And you're like, I can't get a deal. And then interest rates started going up and everybody ran away. But then the interest rates are too high. I can't get cash flow. Here's your fucking sign of what's coming next. What's coming next is that people are going to start seeing these headlines and then more articles are going to come up where they're going to say things like, once these interest rates come down, it's going to be a buyer's frenzy. It's going to be a seller's market. And then everybody's going to jump into it. And if you're like, oh, shit, is, wait, is, 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 is now the time to go? You're too late. And I think everyone should start preparing and getting, um, 
everyone should start prepping for what's to come in a market like this. And in a market like this, a couple of people are talking about unconditional, a couple of people are talking about over asking multiple offers. In situations like that, in a seller's market, seller gets to choose the offer. And a seller does not want to be fucking dealing with having conditions, tying up their property for two weeks to find out if they're actually going to remove them. So if there's five offers and one of them is over asking and they don't have any conditions, the seller is going to accept that offer. And you need to mentally prepare for something like that. You need to put measures in place. You need to make decisions now before something like that happens because you need to be able to answer this for yourself. Am I going to write unconditional offers? Am I going to offer more than the list price or more than fair market value? If I write offers for more than fair market value and I am writing them without conditions, what measures am I putting in place to protect myself and to mitigate those risks? If you can't answer that fucking question, then don't do it. I'm warning you now so you can be prepared for what's coming in the coming months if all signs are go all signs do end up yeah. panning out. I don't want to see a market like spring of 2022 again where people just write unconditional offers and they have no idea what the fuck they're doing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people got burned in 2022. Yeah. A lot of people got burned because they felt that they had to do unconditional offers. That was the only way they, you know, you know what happened, Gabby, uh, people go and they write two offers and they lose and they'd be like, I can't fucking win. I lost two offers. I have to write unconditional yeah. <laughs> only after two offers. No, go write 200 offers, yeah. then come back and have a conversation about whether you should do that or not. Don't, don't just crumble and fold because you, you lost on two deals or someone said that it's multiple offers and you have to write unconditional offers. I want you guys to be proactive right now and start thinking about markets like this because it's it's very predictable. Real estate cycle. There's not many real estate cycles. This is a complicated one. This is probably the most complicated real estate cycle I've, I've seen in 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 many decades. A situation where we have high interest rates, high demand, high immigration, shortage, uh, supply shortage, and we have the the prospect of interest rates coming down. I don't think I've ever seen this formula before. Yeah, for sure. I don't. So this is all kind of new, but think about it. Think about what's going to happen. I've already kind of given you the, the rough idea of what, what, what can be expected to happen. And all, all economists and, and experts are saying the exact same thing of what to expect. It's not guaranteed, but this is what we can expect for a cycle like this. You should be thinking about it ahead of time of how I'm going to capitalize on this and how I'm going to protect myself. Are you going to be buying long-term buying holds and just banking on appreciation? Are you going to be grabbing fix and flips right now while they're still low and renovating them quickly before the market goes up? What are you going to do if you buy up all those properties right now and then the market doesn't go up and it's a false start? Did you go unconditional at high risk? Did you pay over market, over fair market value? How are you going to liquidate those properties if 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 it doesn't go as planned. I want you to think about these things. And if you're going to buy a long-term buy and hold and it doesn't cash flow right now because the interest rates are too high and they haven't gone down yet, what's your long-term plan? What's your short-term, mid-term, long-term plan? Short-term, what's your plan for the, the, the negative cash flow right now? Mid-term would be 2025, 2026 when interest rates start coming down. Are you going to refinance and pay the big penalty or are you going to ride it out for the full term? Are you going to go on adjustable variable right now? Or are you going to go on variable fixed or variable closed? If you're not, you're going to go fixed term. How long is your fixed term? What kind of measures are you going to put in place for this negative cash flow? Are you going to put more money down or are you going to put more money in the bank and the reserve to cover the negative shortfall? When prices go up, are you going to sell or are you going to keep it? When prices go up, are you going to keep it and refinance? And if you keep it and refinance and pull your equity out or your down payment out because it went up so much in value, will it still cash flow? Is it worth it to refinance and pull out all that new equity out because of the fast appreciation? If it means that it won't cash flow? 
What do you plan on doing with a market cycle like this? You can't just think about, I need to buy a property because the values are going to go up. Oh my God. How much of the value is going to go up? That's a, that's a real question because you kind of need to know that before you can make decisions like this. If you're buying a $500,000 asset, it goes up 10,000, 10%. 10% is a huge fucking jump. But I've seen Calgary getting some pretty significant jumps similar to that. Mm -hmm. But 10% is only $50,000. Your down payment's $100,000. So if it increases to $550,000, you've made a 50% rate of return on the appreciation on your down payment, on your investment. But it's not, it's not big enough to do anything with it, to mm -hmm. refinance your property and pull that money out. Right. to pay those penalties or maybe it is but you got to make those decisions you gotta you gotta what you need to do is you need to get a fucking calculator a pencil and a pad of paper and start playing different scenarios start thinking about what am i going to do in a market like this and how am i going to capitalize on it and what the fuck should i be doing today in order to be proactive for that are you going to wait until all those headlines come before you start talking to joint venture partners are you going to wait until multiple offer situations to finally go post that video online is it too late? Don't fucking miss out on this opportunity, please. I, I, I'm sorry for speaking like this, but please, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm, I'm talking to someone two years from now so I can play this again for them and be like, what the fuck? You had all the signs. There's zero excuses. You could have prepped. You could have planned. You Like, make a plan. Plan to win, right? Don't plan to fail. Plan to win. You have an opportunity right now. We have rising rents as well, which we didn't even factor into this with the whole sub, uh, shortage of, of, um, of housing and rentals. The other thing, the other thing, part of this formula that I forgot to mention is the fact that this spring and summer, I have no fucking idea where rents are going to go. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> the, those rents might actually offset the cash flow. That's actually something I've taken into consideration is that if we buy properties, the rents might actually go up so much that it offsets our cash flow. But I also take into account in a situation like this where it's so fucking crazy, what are local governments going to do? What's the federal government government going to do? Because the the ones who cry the hardest or the sorry, the loudest are typically the tenants. And in situations where they're crying super loud, policies might be put in place. Yeah. Could this be the year? Could this huge fucking news, could this huge change and shift in the market cycle actually permanently fuck short-term rentals? We didn't even talk about short-term rentals. How, like, how is that? If there's a shortage, this might be the, the straw that broke the camel's back and it might actually fuck short-term rentals big time. They've only just scratched the surface on, 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 on putting in measures, right? Yeah. More provinces, more municipalities, more uh, might actually start cracking down on it. They're going to need to find a solution because the tenants are going to start screaming. Because at the end of the day, affordability, a uh, place to live is, is, is the most important thing yeah. to a government, right? Like they, that, that's everybody deserves to have a safe place to live. But with inflation and cost of living, I can't imagine. I mean, you look in some provinces and some cities, they and what people pay for rent and what they make, and I'm just like, how the fuck do they survive? Yeah. So I know that I know that it's not impossible, or it's not it's not too hard to to believe what could be possible for rents in our market. At least we are very very low compared to the national average. And what some of the bigger cities have so it's possible the rents could go up significantly you know there's single family houses in calgary just three hours south of us gabby um single family houses can go anywhere from 2500 to three thousand dollars a month i just mm -hmm. did some research last week mm -hmm. 2500 to three thousand dollars a month and currently they're anywhere from 1700 to two thousand dollars a month in edmonton yeah it's a big jump that's a fucking that's a 50 percent jump yeah huge Lots of things to consider for this, this new upcoming shift in the market. Take all that into consideration today. Let that one marinate for today and try and figure out what, what are you going to do? Are you going to take advantage of this opportunity? 
Are you going to jump on it? What are you going to jump on? Are you going to spend 12 months just trying to find that multifamily building? You're going to pick up some residential properties. You're going to buy some short-term rentals. You're going to go raise some capital. What are you going to do? Come up with a plan. Just know that if you wait, you'll miss it because cycles are cyclical and they come and they go opportunities. They come and they go. This is an opportunity or a projected opportunity. When the opportunity does present itself, whenever that is probably the spring, you have to be able to jump on it when it's there. You can't just recognize it and then think about it and then hope that you're going to get into it. And then maybe you're one of the last people to get into it before it just goes away because it, it, it will, it will, it will run its course and then something else will happen. And just look at history. Just look at history. Every every five to ten years, they just things change. They change. They change. They change. They change. And there's a way to make money in all cycles. I've like we've made Michael uh, money in, in down cycles and up cycles, right? Actually, for the majority of our portfolio, it's all been down cycle. Yeah. Actually, that's one of the cool things about this is that you know if you've been investing for less than ten years, it, it's mostly been a down cycle. And if you can make money in a down cycle, oh my God, I'm going to make some real money in an up cycle. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. But uh, that's, that's currently what I'm in the process of doing right now is coming up with my own plan. What do I want? I, I promise you, I do not want a hundred prop, hundred more properties. I don't because <laughs> that will just ruin my fucking lifestyle. Do you, Everly, do you want me to buy a hundred more properties? Oh, you do? You do? Oh, you're such an optimistic, sweet little angel. Do you have any idea how busy I'm going to be if I buy that? You just want the money? Yeah, you just want the money. The money's nice. The money is always nice. But, you know, think about that. And and I guess that's my last point before we uh, we end today's show is that don't just um, think that this is an opportunity to buy as many properties as possible. I want you to think long term about what your goals are. And what, try, what type of a life you're trying to create. And don't just focus on the money. Don't just focus on the doors. Focus on what it is that you truly do want. And build a plan and build a strategy for your business that complements that plan and those goals. If you only need a, need a certain amount, only go for that certain amount. Don't overshoot because I promise you it'll, it'll affect the long-term quality of your life. The life that you're trying to create will be compromised based on the additional work that you just added. Think intently. That wraps up today's show. Have a great Tuesday, you guys. Annette says, you always make me want to pick up rentals immediately. Well, <laughs> let's fucking go. Let's go. Oh, my God. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, stay calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody just calm down. No. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Real Estate Investing Morning Show. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Interested in being a guest on the show? Send us an email to info at reimorningshow.com.